Jésus est notre ami suprême. Oh, quel amour! Et quel frère, il nous aime. Let us turn to our lecture this morning, John chapter 15, verse 15. Le Jésus a parlé avec uh, our Lord Jesus was talking to his disciples. Et il dit au and he told them, Je ne vous plus I no longer call you servants. Parce que le serviteur ne sait pas ce que fait son maître. Because a servant does not know what his master is doing. Mais je vous ai appris ami. But I have called you friends. Parce que je vous ai enseigné tout ce que j'ai appris de mon père. Because I have made known to you everything I heard from my father. Bon Dieu bénisse ma mère. And God bless you. Et ce message à ma mère c'est une promotion imméritée. The title of this message is a uh, pro promotion undeserved. Dernière yeah. fois nous étions quand nous cherchions ça. Last time we stood here to preach. Nous étions parlons de une occasion à ne pas rater. Last time we spoke about an appointment not to miss. Parce que Jésus-Christ est fait une invitation. Because Jesus invited us all. Dans Matthieu 11 verset 28. In Matthew 11 verse 28. Il veut les avoir vous tous qui êtes fatigués et chargés. He says, Come unto me, all who are tired and heavy laden. Et je vous donnerai du repos. And I will give you rest. 
This morning, I pray that God may give you grace to not be tired anymore. Because today, Jesus wants to give us a very good promotion. Are you ready to receive this promotion? Because this promotion, we don't deserve it. He says, I no longer call you servants. What is a servant? Uh, we talked about it being uh, the status of a certain group of people to a specific task. Or a job. Or maybe a, a higher dignity. Uh, maybe a, uh, a group of people who went to a class the same year. You can call somebody or give them a title of a, super, a higher grade. The hierarchy of people. But let us turn to our text. Jesus says, I no longer call you servants. We've crossed and we've transcribed the four Gospels. But we've never seen Jesus call somebody a servant or a servant. You might be surprised to hear that. He let them understand that they were servants without even ever calling them servants. For example, by example, no. Uh, for example, in the parable of talents. Where the master gave uh, servants a certain amount of talents to go invest for him. And when the time came for him to receive back what he gave them. And he gave them this conclusion. Bon et fidèle serviteur. Well done, good and faithful servant. You may enter into the joy of your father. This parable we found in Matthew chapter 25. But there was another example is when uh, the mother of uh, the, the sons of Zebedee came to Jesus. In Matthew chapter 20. We see that the mother of the sons of Zebedee asked Jesus to put her sons on the left and the right of Jesus when he comes back. In verse 26 of that chapter, he says, it's not up to any of you. But he says, whoever wants to be great among you, let him first be servant. And whoever wants to be first among you, let him be your slave. Your servitor, a servant is a person who's working for another person. To, to do a certain job. But he has a responsibility towards that person or the job. But he has no rights. But Jesus says, and if somebody wants to be a master, let him first become a servant. No, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3 5. In Isaiah chapter 53, verses 3 through 5, Jesus says, I no longer call you servants. Is that a good thing? I ask. So, before we can answer the question, we have to see whether or not it was a good thing. No, Isaiah 53, verse 3. In Isaiah 53, verse 3, it says, Méprisé et abandonné des hommes, He was despised and rejected by men. Et à la souffrance, a man of suffering. Semblable à celui dont on détourne le visage. Who knew what sickness was. Nous l'avons dénié. He was like one people turned away. Nous l'avons fait de lui aucun cas. 
We was, he was despised and we did not value him. Yet he himself bore our sicknesses. And he carried our pains. But we turned, regarded him, struck him. Frappé de Dieu et humilié. Struck down by God and afflicted. Mais il était blessé pour nos péchés. But he was pierced for our transgressions. Brisé pour nos iniquités. He was crushed because of our iniquities. Le châtiment qui nous donne la paix est tombé sur lui. The punishment for our peace was on him. Est-ce qu'on l'a le matin? Et c'est par ses meurtres et sûr que nous sommes guéris. And we are healed by his wounds. Nous étions tous errants comme des brebis. We were all lost like sheep. Chacun suivait sa propre voie. Everyone followed his own ways. Et l'Éternel a fait retomber sur lui l'iniquité de nous tous. And the Lord let fall on him the iniquity of us all. Il a été maltraité et opprimé. He was mistreated. Et il n'a point ouvert la bouche. And he did not open his mouth. Sembla par un agneau qu'on mène à la boucherie. Like a, like a sheep heading towards slaughter. Et une brebis, une brebis muette devant ceux qui la tombent. And a sheep mute before those who are going to slaughter him. Il a la he did not open his mouth. Nous Jésus payé au prix. We saw Jesus pay to give us a promotion. Prêt pour la promotion ça? Are you ready to receive this promotion? We see that Jesus took on a sacrifice that was large to be able to give us life. Et c'est ça nous lisons dans Ephésiens chapitre 2 verset 8. And that's what we read in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8. C'est par la grâce que vous êtes sauvés. We are saved by grace. Par le moyen de la foi. By the means of faith. Et cela ne vient pas de vous. And that is not because of you. C'est un don de Dieu. It's a gift from God. Ce n'est point par les hommes. It is not by works. Afin que personne ne se gloire. That no man should boast. God has given us a promotion this morning. But we do not deserve it. Uh, Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 11. He was writing to the Christians in Ephesus. It says, Then remember that one time you were Gentiles in the flesh. Appelé incirconcis par ce qu'on appelle incir ou par ce qu'on appelle circoncis. Called the uncircumcised by those called the circumcised. Et qui ne le sont en la chair par la main de l'homme. Done by hand in the flesh. Mais rappelle que Apôtre Paul va faire à nous-mêmes qui pas juifs. And this is what Apostle Paul was uh, appealing to us who are not Jews. Dans verset 12, il dit souvenez-vous que vous étiez en ce temps-là sans Christ. And verse 12 it says at that time you were without the Messiah. Privé du droit de citer en Israël. You were excluded from the citizenship of Israel. Étranger aux alliances de la promesse. And you were foreigners to the covenant of the promise. Sans Dieu dans le With monde. no hope and without God in the world. Mais maintenant en Jésus Christ. But now in Jesus Christ. Vous qui étiez jadis éloigné. You who were far away by having brought near by the blood of the Messiah. Et puis rapproché par le sang de Christ. You have been brought near by the blood of the Messiah. Do you see what Jesus has done for you this morning? You were dead by your transgressions. And that's what we see in Ephesians chapter 2. And he says, I no longer call you servants. Is that a good thing? In John chapter 8 verse 32. verse 36. Up until verse 36. Jesus was talking to his disciples and he told them this. You will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. And the people that were there responded. We are descendants of Abraham. And we have never been enslaved to anyone. Comment dis-tu vous deviendrez libre? How can you say we will become free? Jésus répond, il dit en vérité, en vérité, je vous le dis. Jesus says, verily, verily, I tell you. Quiconque se livre au péché est esclave du péché. I assure you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. 
People think it's only when you have chains on your feet. Or when you have chains on your arms. That's when you are a slave. But Jesus says those who are committing sin, you are a slave to sin. You may be walking around free of chains. You may have no chains on your feet. But the way you are living says you are a slave. Because if you're not living for God, you're living for the devil. If you're not living a life of sanctification, you're living a life of sin. Anybody who has given themselves over to sin, you are a slave to sin. Verset 35 dit, oh, les slaves ne demeurent pas toujours dans la maison. Verse 35 says, a slave does not remain in the household forever. Le fils y demeure toujours. But a son does remain forever. Si donc le fils vous a franchi, and so if the son sets you free, vous serez réellement libre. You are free indeed. Mais au nom qui t'a remettu la liberté. Jesus is the one that can put you in the place. No matter what situation you're in, whatever you're going through, whatever sin you feel like you're a slave to, the Bible says if Jesus sets you free, you are free indeed. You can no longer be a slave to sin.